Apo va arka, tadyada pangshara asit, tatsamahanyata, sa priti vyabhavat, tasyama shramyat, tasya shrantasya taptasya te joraso, niravartatagnihi. Satredhatmanam vyakurut Adichang tritiyam vayam tritiyam Sa esha prana stredha vihitaha Tasya prachi dikshiraha Asao chasao chermava Atasya pratichi dikputchang Asau cha sau cha saktyau, dakshina chodi chi cha parshve, jau prishtam antarik samudaram iyamuraha, sa esho psu pratishtitaha, yatrakva chaiti tadeva pratitishtat yevam vidvam. Water is Arka. What was there like froth on the water was solidified and became this earth. When that was produced, he was tired. While he was thus tired and distressed, his essence or luster came forth. This was fire. What is this Arka? Water. That accessory of worship is Arka being the cause of fire. For it is said, fire rests on water. Water is not directly arka, for the topic under discussion is not water, but fire. It will be said later on, this fire is arka. Sutra 127. What was there, like froth on the water, like the coagulated state of curds, was solidified, being subjected to heat internally and externally. Or the word shara may be the nominative instead of a complement if we change the gender of the pronoun yad, that. That solid thing became this earth. That is to say, out of that water came the embryonic state of the universe compared to an egg. When that earth was produced, he, Death or prajapati was tired. For everyone is tired after work, and the projection of the earth was a great feat of prajapati. What happened to him then? While he was thus tired and distressed, his essence or luster came forth from his body. What was that? This was fire, the firstborn viraj, also called prajapati who sprang up within that cosmic egg, possessed of a body and organs. As the Smriti says, he is the first embodied being. Shiva Purana 518.22 Text 3 He, Viraj, differentiated himself in three ways, making the sun the third form and air the third form. So this prana, viraj, is divided in three ways. His head is the east, and his arms that northeast, and that southeast. And his hind part is the west, his hip bones that northwest, and that southwest. His sides the south and north, his back heaven, his belly the sky, and his breast this earth. He rests on water. He who knows it thus gets a resting place wherever he goes. He, the Viraj who was born, himself differentiated or divided himself, his body and organs, in three ways. How? Making the sun the third form in respect of fire and air. The verb made must be supplied. And air, the third form, in respect of fire and the sun. 
Similarly, we must understand making fire the third form in respect of the air and the sun, for this also can equally make up the number three. So this prana, viraj, although the self, as it were, of all beings, is specially divided by himself as death in three ways as fire, air, and the sun, without, however, destroying his own form of viraj. Now the meditation on this fire, the firstborn viraj, the arca fit for use in the horse sacrifice and kindled in it is being described like that on the horse. We have already said that the previous account of its origin is all for its eulogy, indicating that it is of such pure birth. His head is the east, both being the most important, and his arms that and that, the northeast and southeast. The word irma, arm, is derived from the root ear, meaning motion. And his hind part is the west, because it points to that direction when he faces the east. His hip bones, that and that, the northwest and southwest, both forming angles with the back. His sides, the south and north, both being so related to the east and west. His back, heaven, his belly, the sky, as in the case of the horse. And his breast, this earth, both being underneath. He, this fire consisting of the worlds, or prajapati, rests on water. For the Shruti says, thus do these worlds lie in water. Shiva Purana 10.5.4.3 He gets a resting place wherever he goes. Who? Who knows that fire rests on water, thus as described here. This is a subsidiary result. Namaste. So this is a subsidiary result, that one gets a resting place wherever he goes, who knows this nature of arka, fire. And what is the main result? Well, that is going to be discussed in Mantra 7. And in a nutshell, it is freedom from further birth and death. How? By becoming death itself. We went over an extensive dialogue between death and Natiketas in the series on Kata Upanishad. And in Kata Upanishad, there was always a difference between Nachiketas inquiring and death answering his questions. But here we see that by practicing this meditation on Virat, one actually becomes death. One becomes fire, water, air, earth, space, and time. In Bhagavad Gita, when he reveals his universal form, the Virat Rupa, to Arjuna, and Arjuna inquires, who are you? He says, time I am, destroyer of the worlds. So the entire world is a fire. We went over that before, that uh, Buddha had said, this world is ablaze. And indeed, if we investigate, we find that everything in the world is under oxidation. It's on fire. It's burning. Maybe burning very slowly, but still, it's going on. And this process of oxidation is called weathering. And it slowly degrades and destroys all forms in this material world. So this is death. This fire, this arka, this virat, this Hiranyagarbha, who, who gives birth to the golden egg of Hiranyagarbha, which then becomes Lord Brahma, who, the incarnation of the Rajaguna, the mode of passion, 
goes and creates all the planetary systems. So this is the process of creation, and this is how the Brahman becomes the universe. Or you could put it another way, how the universe emanates from Brahman. Not in an impersonal way, but by him taking a body and by the exercise of worshiping himself, filling half the universe with his perspiration. And the froth on that ocean became the earth. And after that, he was tired because this was a great effort, a great projection of energy. And when he relaxed, his real essence came out. And this is fire. This is the sun, the moon, lightning, all aspects of fire, including the uh, digestive fire, Vaishvanara, and also the fire of time that consumes and digests and lays waste to all forms. Like when we put on the Tripundra, we say the mantra, earth is ashes, water is ashes, air is ashes, fire is ashes, space is ashes. Why? Because at the end of the universe, everything is burnt up, consumed by this fire, and turned to ashes. So nothing in this world is forever. Even Virat, even Brahma, even Vishnu. And Shiva's form also disappears, although Shiva is not destroyed. It all dissolves back into the formless, unconditioned Brahma, Nirguna Brahma, without any qualities. This is the end state of everything. This is the destiny, the destination, the result of the material creation. Huh? Like they say about some uh, depressing novel or something, everybody dies in the end. <laughs> Everybody does die in the end because life itself is impermanent. Being a manifestation of individuality in a particular form. So this individuality is illusion and so is the form. So illusion cannot stand against reality. Illusion is always dissolving. And that's why we see throughout history, many accounts saying that, oh, the world is going to hell, the world is headed for destruction, you know, any minute now there's going to be the Armageddon <laughs> or whatever. Uh, because in a sense, it's true. The world is always under oxidation. It's always being burned by fire, by the fire of time. And this leads to its ultimate destruction. So what we have to realize from all of this is that the only way to conquer death is to become death, to identify with or merge with the virat, the original form of the purusha within the universe. And that will lead to being able to transcend death because then one becomes the eater, the consumer, huh? the hunger, the fire that destroys everything and leads to it merging back into the Brahman. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum, Aum Namah Shivaya.